Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to finish the job which I started on the cooling system. And really all that involved was topping up the radiator with uh, my preferred coolant and checking for leaks. Uh, the engine hasn't been run hot yet and not that it's a pressurized system, but we yeah, really just need to make sure I close that out. Uh, in terms of my preferred coolant, uh, I don't use anything that's ethylene glycol based. Uh, nor do I use just plain water. What you're seeing here is my my favourite. It uh, it contains a surfactant which enables the uh, the coolant to get in intimate contact with the internal surfaces of uh, of the cylinders and the head and and the like. What that means is that it's actually more effective than water itself, and it's more effective than ethylene glycol. Which uh, some people tend to think that ethylene glycol coolant is uh, actually better than water, which it isn't. Uh, it's a good antifreeze though. So um, a little bit about what happened after the last episode. So I went to start the car and uh, and it took a lot of starting. Uh, it um, When I initially put, uh, put the choke on and it gave it a bit of a crank, uh, fuel did gush out of the uh, the top of the carburetor. So there was, it was obviously over full. And uh, when it did eventually run, it wouldn't idle at all. It was running really, really, uh, really, really rich. There were clouds of clouds of black smoke. It was running on three cylinders. It failed all the spark plugs, uh, and uh, and then it stopped. So um, this episode, I'm going to cover off on what could potentially go uh, potentially has gone wrong with the uh, overfueling situation. Uh, I'm up under the car at the moment because I want to test what the actual float level is. Uh, I've I've set it to the specification. Uh, but it is potentially, uh, the float is potentially too high. So what I aim to do is an old motorcycle trick, which is get a clear piece of hose. And what I'm going to do is attach it to that tap at the bottom of the carburetor and form a U, uh, which then goes up uh, above the, uh, the highest level of, of the carburetor. And when that fills with fuel, uh, you can see exactly how high the, the level of fuel is in that bowl. So that's the first step. Uh, I'm going to see, uh, here I'm measuring the uh, external diameter there to get the right piece of tube. But uh, what, um, what this will entail is just checking that float initially. Okay, so back again. I have with me a piece of 13 mil internal diameter clear hose. That's going to go on the bottom of that bowl and I'm going to zip tie it to probably to the manifold here. I'll just give a bit of a demo here before we get into it. So, uh, there's the carb there. Goes on very nicely. That's going to curve up like that. And, um, when I open the tap, we'll see um, what level that fuel is going to go to. So I'll go back up top side and lash this, uh, this hose down. Otherwise it will just do that. And I've got my finger in the shot. So apologies for that. Okay. So that's the arrangement we have there now and I'm top side. So I should be able to just switch this tap on and we'll see what happens. We've got some fillage. Just filling up more. Okay, so that has a little bit of drip happening. I'll just sort that out. And then we'll go down and see what level it's can, still going up. See what level that comes to. So, I think that's stabilized. Well, bit we don't have, what I might need to do is just put a clamp on that. Cause we're not getting the true pressure if we've got 
sorry, the true height in that column if we've got leaking out. Okay, so that's the next step. Okay, we're back in business. We have a hose clamp to stop leaking. Now we'll turn this tap back on and, uh, and see what that gets us. Yeah, you don't get a good sense of perspective I'm up here. I'll just leave that sit for a few minutes. As it continues to fill up. Okay, I'm going to go under and have a look. Okay, that's, that's what we got there. Can't really give you a great perspective on that. Um, I'm going to get a float level and uh, and try and run it across uh, run a measurement across but it's pretty that bowl's pretty full if anything it's about five mils from the top but i'll just go measure now and judging it now it looks to me to be almost perfect so it's um sorry about the uh, shouting but we're having a, a winter typical winter storm hey rosie what's going on rosie yeah. The new neighbours are from Sydney, New South Wales. I uh, haven't spent a season here in Perth yet, so this is what a typical winter's like. Off and on raining like this. Alright, so back to it. I'm going to just double check uh, and then, um, then we'll call it quits and I'll try starting it and see what result we get. Okay, so that job is now finished. Uh, summary would be that the float itself, uh, I did check it for the ability to float, and it does float, but it's, it's very, very um, reminiscent of the Titanic. So at the pivot point, there's a whole lot of solder. It's really heavy there, and it barely floats. Um, so it's, it's adjusted now such that the, um, the float hangs under its free weight like this, and it literally comes up about five mil before it turns the, uh, the fuel off. And uh, that seems about right. So the whole methodology of measuring float um, levels uh, with, uh, with the, the recommended method in the book really does date you know, to the just the early 20th century when they didn't have clear plastic hoses, um, I think. So that was a much better method of being absolutely sure of what the float level is in that carb. Uh, I think I, I, did, I did state, but I stress, uh, it was belching out um, black smoke and then it, it shut itself off. I think it fouled the plugs. Um, so yeah, gonna give it, a, give it a go and see how it runs. Okay, the verdict is in, so uh, how does it run? Well, this is how well it runs. Uh, I've taken the carburetor back off again. Uh, that made absolutely no difference. Uh, has no idle circuit effectively. It's just, um, I can get revs out of it, but it, um, at idle it's just belching out um, black smoke, rich, running rich as anything. It's not, um, um, it's not ignition, uh, that's for absolutely sure. It's not leaking out of anything, so at least it's not over-pouring. Uh, but yeah, I've got some work to do now. So um, that's uh, the job to do right now. We'll get that apart again. Um, it has been uh, a few weeks since I worked on this thing. Uh, reason being, I've had to, had to go to Brisbane. Unfortunately, my dad passed away. 
uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, um, and that's been my focus. So uh, back again, I'm going to strip this down again, um, and I've got a new float for it. I, uh, I also have um, a new data plate uh, that's got to come off. I'll grind those rivets off. Uh, behind there is a vent, which I need, need to clean out properly. Um, I've got a new, um, I want to call it a mixture screw. Uh, that's not what it's called. It's a, a, nozzle, a, a nozzle screw or something. So I've got a new one of these and also the seat for it. Um, I've got a new main jet. I'm going to um, get brutal and get that one out of there. Uh, and uh, and do a proper job of it this time. So that's it. I'm going to get cracking and, and bring you back when it's appropriate to. Okay, I'm going to do a floating competition. So uh, this is the old float. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And this is a new float. One floats. The other doesn't. So... That's sort of half the problem. Don't know why it suddenly occurred. Um, but anyway, we're on top of it now. So we'll put the new float back in. Well, you put the new float in and we'll set that to specifications. Um, I'm going to use a tube method to set that with a preliminary adjustment of one quarter of an inch. Okay, welcome back. I've achieved somewhat of a milestone here, so I managed to get the, uh, the nozzle out. I'll just flip over and show you. This is the offending part. You can see it's uh, very much hollowed out. Uh, the only way I could get it out over time, so it took, took me a couple of hours to get it out. I uh, initially tried lots of heat and cooling um, with a screwdriver, but that, that really wasn't working at all. Um, and then I started with uh, a set of easy outs, so Fortunately, a nozzle does have a hole down the middle of it, um, obviously this hole. So I started with a small drill bit and opened that up to the point where I could get an easy out in. Um, as you can see, these easy outs do have a little bit of brass on them, um, especially the last one. Um, they weren't really doing anything other than uh, coring out the middle of this thing. So at that point, once I realized that um, I wasn't going to have much traction with the easy outs, uh, I then uh, started with drill bits. Now, this was my last resort because... You know how easy would it be to um, to run outside of the uh, the boundaries of this brass uh, this brass fitting and uh, and then start chewing into your cast iron threads within the carb. So I started small, um, worked my way up, um, and each time I'd finished um, drilling one pit, one bit, I then tried an easy out, and I'd, then I also tried a screwdriver with what was left uh, of that slot there. Uh, and finally, on I suppose when you look at how much is left. Uh, probably what would you call it the the last drill bit um, there's still there's still some material left there uh, it then screwed out so much relief I tell you what that was um that was a tough job so <clears throat> on this side of the table I've got the the old stuff and some of the new uh, obviously I'm not going to replace the, the new needle and seat nor am I going to replace um, the gaskets that are still in good condition uh, but on this side I've got uh, my, my float setting tool, which I made, I'll, I'll re reuse that again. Um, new nozzle, uh, a, a new choke return spring. There wasn't one on here. Um, it's, it was busted out some time ago. A uh, new float you've seen. Uh, this is the locking or I suppose the, the friction, uh, friction nut for the uh, for the, what's it called? A spray needle, which goes into the nozzle. New data plate, uh, because uh, in order to clean this out properly now, I'm going to have to grind these rivets off, take the data plate off, and underneath there is a port to clean, to clear through. Uh, and a couple of rivets, new rivets for the data plate. They look quite different to what I've got here. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how to, to, to do that. I think what I'm going to do is just grind the heads off take the data plate off, and then with a very fine drill bit, um, I have got a drill bit that size, um, the drill drill holes in the existing rivets that are left in there to, to push those in. Um, that's really it. So I'm going to crack on now and, uh, and data plate off, um, 
clean up the rest of that and start, whoa, start clearing out some ports after I throw it across the workshop. Good one. All right, so the Dremel tool is probably going to make you the most appropriate here. The all important PPE, of course. Okay, let's see what we got here. Seems to be doing the trick. Sound steady. Uh, grinding into the data plate now. It's obviously an original data plate because the uh, it's all made of copper and the brass. Let's see what uh, we make of that. Oh, there we are. Okay, let's do the other one. Obviously, I don't want to hit the body of the carburetor. It's a different sound when you hit the data part. Let's try that. Started moving there. There we go. That is uh, I've made a plate off. So I think the idea of um, of being able to drill into these rivets, I think that's probably a good idea. It's going to be soft material. I'm just going to take down the um, the bit of remaining. I want to make it flush to the surface. Okay, you can see our port under there. Now, having never cleared one of these out before, I am going to do some inspection, which you don't need to necessarily see on camera. Now I've got to check out my notes as well on uh, where all of the various ports are that need cleaning out. So I'll bring you back. Okay, so I'm going to endeavour to show you the, the ports that need cleaning out. Um, this one's pretty big. Um, I don't think there's much risk of a blockage there, but that's going to get cleaned out. Um, there's one here, and that's got a little slug of brass or lead in there that needs to be drilled out. There's one here. Same story. There's a slug of something in there, so that's going to need to be drilled out. And there's one here. So what I've read about these is that You've literally got an internal passageway that runs around the carb uh, interconnected here and here and here and here. Uh, that passage just needs to be um, made sure, make, you need to make sure that passage is clean all the way. And, uh, and then you reseal after you've done that. Kind of a weird arrangement, but anyway, it is what it is. So I'm going to now set to drilling these out carefully. And... Uh, and then I'm going to clean through. I 
Nomad. Oh, I broke it off. Oh no. It broke off inside the inside the port. That's a good outcome. Some prayers there that uh, could come through that way. But nope. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh, did it actually break off? Yeah, it did. No way. I can't believe it. Oh, dear, dear, dear. That's a freaking disaster. That's ruined the carburetor. I can't even see it. And you're coming in for a look. You can share my pain. It went in there. Okay. Turn you off and have the thought about what to do next. All right, so here's the current thinking. There is still scope to remove more of, uh, more of that brass plug. So I'm going to use a bigger bit, bigger bit, bearing in mind that the broken off bit is now sitting in here somewhere. It's, it's beyond. Um, I've been able to... I'll just try and demonstrate here with a skinny little bit. I can sit that down in there and the broken off piece is that far in. So I'm going to finish drilling this out. It, I'm going to assume it just dropped in there, that it can just drop in there. So um, I, I definitely didn't drill that far in. So um, I will then, fortunately, these are uh, magnetic and I got a, quite a strong magnet. I ha also have some neodymium magnets up at the house, which um, I'm willing to use to try and, and finalize that. So off we go. Slow progress, progress all the same. I'll bring you back when I'm all the way through. Okay, all is not lost yet. I did manage to drill that brass plug out completely. Uh, I've just reconfirmed that the broken piece is roughly that far in. Now, um, what I'm going to do, it looks like this passage is interconnected here where this, uh, this other brass plug is that I need to drill out. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that out. And then I'm going to try and shoot compressed air back this way um, with a magnet as well. So I'm going to tease it out this way and, uh, and blow compressed air and we'll see how successful that is. I'm just hoping that that just didn't jam in there when it broke off. Anyway, we'll see what happens.
Okay, let's see what that gives us. I'm going to blow on here. Yep, it's interconnected all right. Let's see what that does. I'm going to stick that back in the vise to get my compressor powered up and see what we can do. All right, we have a <coughs> we have success. There's the uh, the offending part, offending piece of drill bit with its other half. Uh, yeah, it worked. So I um, I drilled that plug out, uh, fired some compressed air. Initially, didn't there was no result. Fired it a few times. Then I noticed that I could see the drill bit in here, and then I um, I got a pick and I kind of. I kind of forced it back up that way and then I forced it back in and did that a few times and then I applied compressed air again and it might have been a combination of me maybe freeing up some crap in here um, to form a bit more better seal and then it shot out <clears throat> at a great rate of knots and I was actually able to catch it on the end of, end of the bench so that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing I did note was when it was it was in there I was covering this hole and blasting compressed air down here and um, there was there was no way where there was nowhere for the air to go. Um, it was literally blocked. But then eventually, after doing a number of times, it freed up. So there's definitely a blockage um, in between here and here somewhere. So that's now good. I've now cleared that up. Definitely clear this way, which is really good. Um, now all that remains, I'm going to drill that um, that one out, and then I should be able to. Um, uh, have a, a clear result all the way through. There's not one there, is there? No. So I'll drill that one out and uh, we'll take it from there. But that's, can't tell you how freaking happy I am that that wasn't a complete disaster because that would have been pretty bad if I hadn't been able to get it out. Okay, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. I've, um, I've taken that plug out of there and blown that through. You can you can definitely tell these three interconnected and they're all clear. The only thing that remains is in behind the choke here. You may not be able to see it. Um, I can't even see it myself. Um, in there. Let's see if I can point this out with a little poker. Okay, so there's two uh, little holes here. I believe one's for the primary circuit, one's for the idle circuit. Um, it's just a matter of getting a bit of a cheek poker in there and poking those through, which I have done. I've got a bit of um, welding wire. So, so I've done that, I've run that through. I'm just going to also run a bit of brake cleaner in there as well, just to make sure it's clear. Otherwise, um, I'm going to run brake cleaner through these passages, blow it out again with some, some air, make sure there's no more gunk in there, and then we'll be good to go. Now, I'll just uh, pop that in the vise up here. Uh, trouble with these things is that you've got throttle linkages that don't allow you to play. Um, right. Um, do I have brake cleaner with a nozzle? I have a nozzle down here off a silicone spray silicone thing. Let's see if it goes in there. All right. Run that through there. Run that through there. It's pretty crappy. Some crappy stuff coming out. Through here. Hey. That's this um, fuel inlet. Take it out of the vise. So I can't see. Okay, so we've got this one. This one. Oh, yes. It does piss out of the. Um, there's two ports, those very fine ports. Try that again. I'll cover both of these. Okay, and run that through there. Run 
Und meine Runde auch so kein Muff. Next door is about to arc up by the sound of it. They're doing a, a build, house build. A few tradies on there to, at the moment. i open this up and see if I can... I think I put it best results going through this port here. Yeah. You see that? Those are definitely clear. The ones inside in there. That's dandy. A little bit of compressed air to finish off. Safety glasses on. Don't want it in my eyes, particularly. The compressor will come on straight away. You bet. Oh, down in there. Look in there. That is me done, literally. All that remains is fine holes drilled here for those rivets into that material. I'm not going to bother about trying to get them out. That port remains open. Uh, I need to block off that, that, and that, and then it's done. I'm fairly Elated, I think is the word. That could have gone so badly. Um, what I also need to do actually is um, the uh, return spring on this choke here. Uh, in order to do that, by the looks, is um, going to need to take the staple out of here. That's going to be pretty horrible to do. Because this, you won't be able to get the spring on unless you have the shaft out to put the shaft back in. I haven't got a spare one of those either. Um, just, um, I'm just looking in the back here for how that. Let me try and tease that on camera here. So you can tease that out. Yep, staple. And that's just now, give that a bit of lube. not talking much here because I'm thinking and observing how that's held on because it's got a bit of wobble on it you see I can see the remainder of the uh, coming in there the remainder of the spring oh, I can't see that without a light let's put a light on there nope won't focus but I can see the remainder of a spring in there. I'm going to put you down and uh, and try a little bit more firmly to get this uh, this out. Ah, yes. When uh, when it seems too hard to to, to move, um, try alternative means. Now this is how you pull it out. This little this just pulls out this way. So that goes like that. Just held in with that staple. Now in theory the shaft should come out, which it does. 
beauty. And this is the this is the offending spring, which is busted. Busted and also stuck. Come on. Hmm. More off camera shenanigans. Okay, so what I think of, I'm observing here is that looks like the top of the spring bent over. So I think the spring, and I've got the replacement here, it has this. I think it sits somewhere, somewhere like that, and that pokes up through a little hole in the cover, and then it gets folded over. So to get that out, it's the opposite. I just have to straighten that, and, uh, and then we should have a result. Hey, straighten it or snap it off, whichever. Yeah, this is, this is gonna come out. Hey, watch out. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of brute force here, I think. I'll place that in my movable vise. Without being too rough on the actual bracket, because this thing has seen better days. Hey. Let's try there. It looks every bit of its 108 years. Come on. find something a bit more there we go and that is and that is your spring now Grab the new spring. It can only really go on one way. And that is, I can see the, there's a hole in there now. So that will just drop. Down like that. Into there. See that? And that was bent down sideways. So what I might do is bring this back into the vise. see that but there you have it and very carefully try and bend that over just need some needle nose pliers If you can see that or saw that, but that's what we got going on. So 
So you have that set up there. That's going to enable it to spring and return. Okay. Let's get, why don't we get this back in? So it definitely goes this way. And spring in all the way will be choke open like that. Sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing, but just bringing that home. Um, this is not all the way home yet. Yeah, that's going to give a very positive choking action. Just give this a bit of a tap, I think, with a screwdriver. Yep. Oh, it popped off. Never mind. I'm sure I can get it back on. All right. That's in. I think I'd like to clean that first. It's been painted. Pretty unnecessary. Clean but painted. <laughs> it doesn't look like it matters which side. I think the critical thing here is that the uh, staple holes line up. And that's easier said than done. <laughs> Being circular, it wants to rotate, swing around, kind of live its best life and not allow those holes to line up. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this viewing is not a great viewing pleasure. I might park you for now. And I'm sure I'll have a story to tell. Okay, timely to bring you in now. So the struggle wasn't too bad so those holes are lined up there what i did have to do though is and it made it easier was i just took a pretty coarse piece of sandpaper and took all that paint off that extra few thou of paint um really did make a difference in, in getting that in so um so we're there now and uh didn't put up too much of a struggle it did actually go in only one way um those holes aren't centered on that plate so anyway i'll drop that little staple thing in and uh, might drop it in with a bit of Loctite and that should just hold it in and that will be it for the choke plate Give it a quick um, Blast out and then I'll be into reassemble stage Okay, and there is the finished product Again, there's a little bit of a secret to here what you could uh, what I could noticed was um, In its resting position those holes were slightly um, 
solidly covered and the only way that you could uncover the holes in the plate would be to push push that in and then the holes lined up perfectly so in its default position there's ever so slight uh, pressure on the, the lateral pressure on on that staple to stop it coming out and uh, it's now in properly all that remains is to um, just connect uh, the spring uh, and there's a little little boss that it kind of clips over just down there so I'll, I'll try and do that with you guys watching it's just let's give you a little bit of a sense of adventure here so this is the um, this is the arrangement that has to go onto there I think the easiest way will be a little pick <clears throat> Bring that around here. Tension isn't huge. Oh, and there's a fighter. Hmm. One more, one more try with you guys watching. You have to clear, clear that. And then clear. See how that's now in there like that. You guys aren't going to see this anyway, so I might just switch you off and then finish it. <coughs> oh, okay. So you you get the gist. Okay, so uh, definitely. You can see my ungloved hand because I had to use. That's working very well. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't slip that over. I couldn't slip that over with the shaft still being on there. So I did have to reverse. Had to take the staple out. Take the, the butterfly plate off. Withdraw the shaft. Put the spring over there, and then you can go back the other way. Um, but having done it once. It's uh, pretty straightforward. I'm really happy with that. That's great. Um, I'm going to drill these out. And, uh, and then I'll be in a position to put the new data plate on. Uh, let me just... Um, got a bit of blood on my finger here. Stuck myself. Grab a fresh glove. Yeah, you need pretty decent eyesight to, to do some of these jobs. Oh, bloody hell. God blew out. Um, I'm reasonably lucky that at my age, I'm not into reading glasses at this point. I've got one eye that's short side, one eye that's long sided. So that sort of kept me out of the, the reading glasses zone, so to speak. I don't know how that works, but my eyes have haven't gotten weak because of that arrangement. Okay, so um, let me set that up a bit better. I want to put this into my, my movable vise and I can put the vise in the right place on the bench. To drill those out. Right, it's going to be, here's the rivets in the bag. Grab my scissors. Snip that bag open. I don't know the size of this drill bit. Yeah, drop that down. Pretty bloody small, is what I would suggest. So I've got a couple of options here already. Again, the gloves aren't helping. Just measuring up that, that's a little bit too small. And this one's the one that broke. And that is just a little bit big. I think I might go with the small one. It's a little bit small. Don't have a center punch here with me. That would be pretty handy. What I do have though, this might work, 
This is a degree, this is a sort of a automotive cannibalism going on here. That's got a very fine point. I'm not going to reuse it. We'll drop a drop a bit of a center punch there. Using its uh keep forgetting the name of it. Spray needle. It's a spray needle. Center punching with the spray needle. Kind of worked. Now, in terms of depth, I need to get it roughly four or five mil. Yeah, I'm going to need to um, mark that drill bit. Yeah, don't, need, don't need a massive piece of masking tape here. Maybe just enough. Let's see. Um, and that's going to be perfect. Hopefully. Just chuck this in the, in the drill. Okay, now steady as she goes. About a mil and a half to go. Yo, I think we've reached the ultimate destination. Let's have a look here. Yep, beauty. It's fine, I'll blow that out too. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's it really. data plate is here. Funny thing with these is that um, I'll leave there's a protective plastic on there, I'll just leave that for the time being, but you can't, you don't see them because it's on the other side of the, uh, it's on the, other, on the block side of the engine. So, um, fortunately, I think the holes line up, which is a bit of a bonus. Yep. Can need a little punch on here. Oops, I'm going to take gloves off for this. I need dexterity. You should see what I'm doing with my tongue. All right. Okay, it started. I'll start the other side off too. And then I can bring it home.
fiddly doesn't uh, do it much justice, really. And she could see what my fingers are doing here too. Well, I should have been a surgeon. Okay. Couple more taps on this one. And that, my friends, is a data plate riveted back on. So I'm yeah, quite pleased that I'm just trying to peel the uh, plastic off. There we go. Looks just like I bought one. Happy with that? I didn't do it upside down, did I? Yeah, that's great. Okay, um, blocking off some ports now, and then that will be it. I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, so I finished that job. What I've used is a Permatex uh, fuel tank repair. So it's a two pack uh, steel, it's called a steel weld, and, um, and you get a very nice finish. So the next person, or myself, that wants to do this job again, that's going to drill out really easily. Uh, here's that one done, and and this one as well. So uh, all that now remains is to uh, do my little reassembly job. So I'll set you up and we'll crack on with that. All right, first things first. I'm going to put the uh, spray nozzle in. Uh, yes, indeed, it goes in there. Put a WD. And uh, I'll drop it straight in there. Grab a screwdriver. The thread's pretty tight, but it should also be a tapered thread. I'm just going to do it that far. Um, I do want that to be able to come out again, and that was actually pretty hard to get in. It's not going to leak. Um, you just don't want it leaking past there. That's that one. Now I'll put his a, a opposing friend. This is our little locking arrangement. Locking, not really locking, just adjusts the tension. You can see it's got um, fine slots. Well, you maybe can't. Yeah. I can see the fine slots, four of them. What that does is, um, is you screw it in further and further. See, at the moment, there's zero resistance for that turning. That then gives it that resistance. So I'm only going to do it by hand initially. Okay. Uh, needle and seat. Okay, so there's a washer. There's a seat. has a washer on it. Zoom out a little bit better. It might be better. <clears throat> Goes in that. If you might clean the screwdriver, I've got or even touch it to the uh, and even see it's got the fine filings on it, metal filings. It's magnetic. Okay. 
Right. It's hard showing you guys what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So again, the, the rule here is just to nip things up. There's a washer on here, so it's um, it doesn't need to be talked talk down hard. The last thing you want is to strip. Uh, so that's tight enough on that. Um, let's have a look at float float level. So I'll put the um, put the needle in here. I will grab a new float. Uh, minor problem here. <clears throat> the shoulders, the shoulder of that float doesn't fit in that. I need to do a fine adjustment. What may have happened is I may have accidentally burnt that down a little bit in my all my vice work. So I'll just quickly give that a bit of a tweak. We'll see how that is now. Just tweak that with a plier. That's where I want it to be. Gently pushing that in. Come on. There we go. Emphasis on gently, but sometimes it's not going to work. Sometimes just a little bit extra persuasion. There we are. Okay, so uh, already it looks <laughs> pretty diabolical. Too much float. What we're trying to do is measure opposite the hinge. I made up this template last time, quarter of an inch. Yeah, there's a little bit of adjustment required there. Try to pick the other way, push it down. It hasn't been easy before doing that though. leave it there um, and uh, and I'm going to measure the fuel level using my plastic tube method anyway so okay so just about ready to put it all back in I'm already pleased with the result I'm not very amused by that sort of tap set up, but that's, it is what it is for now. I'll put it back to standard at some point in the future. Um, yeah, that's, that was quite the learning experience to be honest. Um, I've got this, uh, this screw set, uh, one and a half turns from, uh, touching that, uh, that main jet. So we're all done. Going to put it back in and then see if it'll run. Uh, hello, loyal viewers. <clears throat> We've got a result. And it, um, it started first, first crank, hand cranked. Could be a little bit lean. I'm so pleased with that result. Sounds really nice.
I'm going to take it out for a little spin, put the hood back on. Clean some tools away as well. Oh, this has been a long time coming. I reckon it's been six weeks. Beauty. Go and grab the hood. Stick some air in this tire. Looks a bit flat. And get going. All right. So I'm going to give this, give it a crack, give it a start. All right, pretty happy with that. Gonna drive it out. <laughs> Intermittent starter. Well, thank you all for tuning in to this pretty long episode. Um, progress is always great. Um, all I've got left to do now is there's a few body bolts that um, need checking. Uh, I saw a body bolt without a nut on it, so that needs to be addressed. Um, and last but not least will be the rear oil seals. Not that there's, not that there's much going on. In terms of leakage, it's um, it's got that sort of level of leakage. So, pretty sure the um, the uh, e-brake or emergency brake shoes are um, are a bit contaminated. Although it's steel anyway, but um, it's not. I, I need to pass a test on how effective that brake is. So, if I have to get that completely decontaminated while I'm there. May as well replace the seals if they are required. Um, I've got a license plate here to put on. I'm going to do that as well. Um, but apart from that, that's it for this episode. Thanks again.